Welcome back. We're staying on top of former state lawmaker Aaron Von Ellinger's trial. The defense rested its case and closing arguments wrapped up. He faces two felony charges. A state house intern accused Von Ellinger of rape during the 2021 legislative session. And now that all the evidence is laid out and both sides have made their cases, it's up to the jury to deliberate and return with a verdict. Our Andrew Bartline has followed the trial for us and is live at the Ada County Courthouse. So Andrew is going to walk us through those closing arguments. But first, what Von Ellinger himself said on the stand. Andrew. Yeah, well, he's facing two charges right now, rape and forcible penetration. Both of these are felony charges. And Von Ellinger took the stand today, as you mentioned, Doug, and he denied any wrongdoing while doing that. He testified that he and Jane Doe went to dinner on March 9th of last year. That night ultimately ended at his apartment. There was a sexual encounter. Von Ellinger says that entire encounter was consensual. Now, Jane Doe had a request where she wasn't comfortable with any penetration. That is according to Von Ellinger's testimony today. And he says he listened to her and abided by that. Again, he says all sexual acts Never were consensual that night. Have sex or get into her underwear at all. Closing arguments followed and there weren't any surprises as attorneys for both sides wrapped up their positions and made one last push for their case to the jury. Now, since the beginning, the prosecution has said Aaron Von Ellinger abused his position of power as a lawmaker. And the prosecutor went as far to press Von Ellinger in cross-examination today and get him to verbally say that lawmakers are above interns in the workplace hierarchy at the state house. The defense, however, says Von Ellinger's position as a lawmaker and Von Ellinger also being nearly twice Jane Doe's age does not inherently mean a sexual assault took place. But the prosecution got the last word and they asked the jury to take a step back, look at the whole picture, and they say that manipulating a 19 year old intern is easy for a man in power and nearly effortless. That man used power and control over her. He approached her as a state representative and gave her his state representative card. He approached her and asked her to dinner as a state representative, because why not? He took her to dinner in his uh, roommate's BMW, not his own vehicle. He took her back to his apartment where he continued to use that power and control to rape her. The only evidence you have is that JV initiated the first contact by text. That's the evidence that you have. You have no evidence of him seeking her out. You have no evidence of him stalking her. You have no evidence of him doing anything to create what they want you to believe was this power differential. Now, the defense brought up a point today that there were only two people in the bedroom that night where the alleged sexual assault took place. Jane Doe's testimony, as we reported yesterday, was taken off the record. Um, she couldn't sustain further questions and cross-examination. So, really, it is the word of Aaron Von Ellinger right now. It's the only testimony we have of what happened in the room that night. Now, there is DNA evidence that links Aaron Von Ellinger to a swab that was taken off Jane Doe's stomach. Um, it's important to note that the defense says this is meaningless because they already admit that there was a consensual sexual encounter that night. Now, we're still waiting on word from the jury. They've been deliberating since around 1 to 2 o'clock today. Uh, we haven't heard back yet. We know the court closes at a pretty hard 5 o'clock. So if we don't hear word until 5 o'clock, we're going to have to wait till tomorrow to get this verdict from the jury. Doug. Okay, Andrew, thank you very much for all those updates on this, uh, this trial today. Thanks.